So thank you. Uh, it is wonderful to be here with you all. I've been learning a lot during the conference. Um, so good afternoon. I will be talking about visual black in Brazil, only a recent example, which involves visual images, but also um, mental images, where words should be linguistically and also visually decoded, that is, see, look at. So, um, let me see, why is this? down as it was supposed to. Now it's there. So I'm beginning with the book. Uh, the book is an object and a rather complex object. So uh, the object of analysis put forward here is the matrimonial cell interno. Let me see. Um, um, and this uh, book is authored by uh, William Blake. William Blake. Uh, the writer Ineas Tavares and the artist Fred Rubin, or to use Tavares' own words, it is a three authored work with Philippe Castillo and Arthur and the Turbeki. Sorry, I was pronouncing their names in English. They are both Brazilians, of course. Philippe Castillo and Arthur Vecchi doing the initial and final edits, and Avec publishing it in 2019. Well, let's consider the question of the, who the authors are. The authors are, uh, according to this portrait, um, and I'm uh, um, showing you, as you have in the caption, a detail from the front panel of the dust cover. Don't, don't forget it's the dust cover of the book. So uh, these portraits are the portraits of the three authors of Uma Trimonio, uh, at the top of the front panel of the desk cover, the portrait of Blake at the center. John had to wait, he was the one painted by Thomas Phillips in 1807. But instead of looking away from us into the distance by Phillips Blake, Rubin Blake uh, stares straight at us, inquisitively. And that makes a big difference, of course. Now, again, uh, the author. Uh, the portraits of the other two authors hover above that of Blake. Avar on the left, head and neck, Rubin's on the right, head and neck, and the two of them placed beneath their names at the top of the front panel. Together, the portrait of the writer, the artist's self-portrait, and their name, all inked in blue, frame and point to that of Blake, particularly to his white face, also focused on by Tavaz and Rubin's eyes, drawn in different ways, but both somewhat puzzling. So this is the book. Now, let's look at the title, and uh, let's go on with the author. Don't forget the authors are William Blake, Inés Tavaz, and Fred Rubin, according to um, the Brazilian author. The name of the third author of the book and its title are horizontally centered at the bottom of the front panel of the dust cover and still in the dust cover. William Blake above, in red, and the matrimony of the cell even below, in white. The white and red lettering is also aligned with Blake's red coat and white face, centered at the top of the panel, function functioning as the lower and upper end of a vertical axis, along with three of the four protagonists of the matrimony, in Tavares' own words, seem to burst out of the panel. So remember what we have been saying about movement in Blake's images, about the special kinds of movement, movement that we can be uh, depicted, that we can see depicted in his um, work. So um, let's look at the uh, front panel again, and let's look for the four protagonists of the matrimony. He, uh, who are indeed introduced in the front panel of the desk cover. So we have Anthony Mustache, a corrupt religious leader, standing below Blake, um, with his Bible in his hand, preaching. Chico Amarant, a hired killer, standing ready for action, down beneath Sancho's right arm, with his gun in his hand, diagonally aligned with Sancho's Bible, and this is 
very important, the Bible and the gut. The diagonal axis on the right side of the panel is exercised by Dani, Daniela Rosa, an artist and drag ruler, sitting behind in the Virgin Mirror and below stand. So I'm going to help you. I'm talking about this character. Can you see? Okay, this one here. Um, sitting behind in the Virgin Mirror and, and below stand on the right side with her brushes. So the brushes are here. The brushes. The Bible, the gun. Bible, the brushes, the gun. Um, uh, in a hand, I'm staring up in awe at a gigantic figure who burst out of an easel. And finally, let me have some more, sorry. And finally, um, on uh, um, uh, okay. And finally, on the left side of the lower part of the panel, Veronica Vieges, the fourth protagonist, and his court, is brought forward sitting with her face, uh, with her back turned to the other protagonist, and her red hair diagonally in line with the red coat, thus completing the vertical pyramidal composition of the panel. So these are the protagonists. Uh, and now we have the setting, so far. Santos, Emerente, Dani, and Veronica are shown in the continuous color illustration of the dust cover of the matrimony, as if they have been swallowed up by São Paulo. Um, are you listening to me? Are you able to listen? Am yeah, I we can hear you fine. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay, fine. So as I was saying, São Paulo is shown here. Uh, in a way that it seems that they, all these uh, protagonists have been swallowed up by the uh, Sao Paulo devouring metropolis, where their story, stories are set. <clears throat> the big city seen here is all started by the description of the Umatrimani title page contained in his script, and he shares a soul panel. It is Sao Paulo city, shown in a simultaneously realistic um, realistic, uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, sorry, um, a symbolist and futuristic style. It is the first of all big cities and bellic and monumental concrete buildings at sunset. Above them, a polluted and reddish infernal sky. From below, vapors can uh, come out of the earth's entrance, out of the pipelines and the sewer. Well, now we have the protagonists of the story, the Brazilian story, and the setting, so on. What next? Well, now we begin to see some of the Blake's figures, but not a figure from the Nelly of Heaven and Hell. Um, we have um, here, overtaken by surprise and fear, the various Dani, artists, their viewer and consumer, don't forget, introduces Blake, the girl of the scene, in the uh, Paulo story, this fierce red figure is moving recreation depicted in the illustrated dust cover of the matrimony. So I'm always looking at this uh, large, uh, I've given the uh, size uh, before, so I'm going to recover the size of this story. Um, so we are talking about, 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 about uh, something which is 32 by 23 centimeters, if you look at the caption of figure 3 here. Now, let's get back to this cover, okay? So, um, we have this um, uh, protagonist, this uh, artist, drug dealer and consumer, uh, in front of her easel with the um, brushes in her hand. And all of a sudden, she is overtaken by surprise and fear. She is delirious because she consumes, of course, and uh, the, uh, there is this um, Blake's ghost, obviously, uh, who enters the um, Sao Paulo story, a fierce red figure in Rubin's recreation, depicted in his research, uh, that's so right, and I was saying below Blake on his right side. And now we have the third character, taken from uh, Marriage, the Viathan. And we have him, um, he, he, he comes as he, he, 
initiate the mind that is using, of the story that shaped the Brazilian graphic novel, those set in São Paulo, the ones told in the marriage, and those lived by Blake himself. So what we have here is a very complex compound of these three, or even more, because in a way the story of the four São Paulo protagonists are four stories. So if you look at that way, we have at least seven stories, the stories of the seven protagonists, uh, the story of stories coming from the marriage, and then the story of Blake himself, who at the same time is the author and also a character in the book. Uh, with his head vertically lowered over St. Paul, Leviathan appears in the dust cover as a serpent from whose circle of six scaly, living coils all characters seem to emerge. Now, what is this objective? What kind of object is this um, matrimony? Um, Tabar and Rupi classify matrimony as a graphic novel, adding that it can also be identified as a recreation of a classic. So, Blake, the marriage are classics. Uh, the marriage is a classic. Through another medium, comic. An adaptation, a rereading of the original, a violent and poetic drama, and pure visual poetry. Or, quoting one of the individuals who, uh, whose texts are um, also included in the book. Uh, script translation adaptation by Inés Abbas and art recreation adulteration by Fred Zubi. Whichever of these classifications is taken, Sao Paulo emerges in Claudia Lamb's words as the ideal setting for this tale of heavenism and survival. As a perfect travel for the nuances of violence, sex, loneliness, politics and religion that affect the daily whether we accept it or not. Uh, and we are now reaching the end of my presentation. Um, and I'm quoting um, Donald Old uh, in whose memoriam I presenting uh, as uh, this this uh, paper. Donald Duck comics as radical as they were. This provocative comparison between Donald Duck, Duck comics and Blake's work is quoted from In the Trenches, Taking the Heat, Confessions of a Comic Professor, a memoir written by Donald Holt in 2003 for the International Journal of Comic Art, Pioneers of Comic Art Scholarship Series. And the comparison appears at the end of the second paragraph of page 242, the one that is here, but I enlightened apart from it. Uh, and uh, I, as I was saying, reaching the end with this title, Donald Wolf and Donald Duck comic at Berkeley. Not follows our comparison at the end of the quotation will be read in the context of his description of the political and cultural turmoil of the late 60s around the world, and particularly in the US. And we've been talking a lot about this period in our conference in Germany. In late August 1968, my wife Linda and I drove across the country from Chicago, where the violent police brutality towards anti war protesters at the Democratic National Convention was being televised to the chance the whole world is watching. To Berkeley. So we were turning from were driving from Chicago to Berkeley, where we learned upon our arrival that the Bank of America had just been blown up. Every academic term during my first two years at Berkeley was marked by major disruptive, disruptive events. During those years, the faculty parking lots were filled with National Guard vehicles and campus tear gassing was a regular occurrence. Military teach in by faculty had become a staple of campus life, and there was a great demand for me to lead sessions on William Blake, who was predictably seen as a prophet of radical political activism, mystical vision, and psychedelic consciousness, rumor had it that Blake's body automatically produced LSD. It was in the context of his social turbulence when normal academic activity began to break down that I seized the opportunity and began to incorporate Donald Duck comics, which I considered to be every bit as radical as Blake was into my teaching. So, you must be um, pay much attention to the context in which this uh, quotation, Donald Duck comics as radical as Blake's work, is made. 
Um, and now uh, I'm uh, reaching the end. And I must tell you that as a Portuguese who was uh, 22 in 1974, his description of what was going on in the campus of these, uh, or in the campuses of this university remind me a lot of what I, I experienced, I myself experienced at the University of Lisbon on those 1974 days and also the previous years, I would say. Also, 1968 was important for us in Portugal, too. Okay. Also, too. This is when I will be revisiting old theoretical ideas, including in Karl Marx's conversations, and moving them forward through my analysis of the demonic and perhaps starting with the vast characterization of their references to place. And I think this gives us, in the context of, of what we have been discussing in the conference, a lot to think about. Spread throughout, and this is what Savage and Ruby are saying, although it's Savage with it. Um, spread out throughout our graphic novel, my and Fred Rubin's references, right, of course, are used in two ways. First, they pay homage to Blake's original work and his multiple production techniques, like poetry, painting, engraving, and especially the illuminated book, which he produced during his whole life. Secondly, they give examples of Blake's cultural reception in the 20th and 21st centuries in books, records, films, and television series, as well as in the medium used in this project, comic book. Uh, although I say that it would be a second part of my presentation, or a second presentation, and then we don't have enough time for it next time, I would like to say that one of the things which surprised me most about the way in which they look at play is that they are looking at him from a technical point of view as one uh, right because he is not able to draw and do the inking and the, all the things that the artist does. And the other one, the artist, we pays a lot of attention to how great uh, objects are produced from his visual uh, point as uh, a comic um, artist. Thank you.